Well, hello Internet, and welcome to my JavaScript scripting tutorial. Today, I am going to actually redo the last part of the tutorial to see if you guys like this format better. So please comment below, and that will influence the way I do tutorials in the future. Well, I'm going to teach you a whole bunch of things about JavaScript today. This is the file you're going to be working with. I know it looks really simple, but it actually does some pretty complicated things, and it uses a ton of different tools in JavaScript. That's why I'm using it. What I'm going to teach you specifically in this tutorial is exactly how to make this line of text, when clicked, not only perform a whole bunch of actions in the background without reloading the browser, but also change the line of text, as you saw I just did right there. Okay, how did I do it? Well, let's start at the beginning. First off, to insert a script, a JavaScript file or code, into your HTML page, you can either link to an outside JavaScript file or embed the script directly into the page itself. I chose to actually embed it, which I normally never do, but I did it this way just so I could explain everything to you. Now, you don't actually have to define the type tag here because browsers in general think everything between script tags is JavaScript, but it's considered good form, and you can see it's not going to take you that long to type that in. Then, what am I doing here with this line? Well, you, if you saw my HTML tutorial, you know that this is a HTML comment, meaning that everything that lies between this tag right here and this tag down here is going to be ignored by HTML. Why did I do that? Well, some browsers do not allow for JavaScript to run on it. And some people have JavaScript shut off because they think it's a security threat. So what this comment is going to do, and this comment down here, is block all the JavaScript code from being seen at all for those browsers that do not rec recognize JavaScript. Okay, so you started off with this bracket, exclamation point, two negative signs, and to close it all off, you put uh, two forward slashes, a space, two negative signs, and this closing bracket right here. So that's how you would hide all of your JavaScript code. Then what did we do? Well, you have to understand that this line of text right here is actually right here. As you can see, here's the HTML tag which lies inside of the body while the JavaScript code would lie between the heading tags in your formatting of your web page. So what does this guy do? Well, here I'm defining a span, which is an inline version of a div. And if you don't know what a span or div mean, you should watch the HTML tutorial. It's free. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm giving this span an identification name of if span ex, and then on click, what it's going to do is it's going to send the value 1 and 4 to a function named testing if value. And that guy lies here, but a full version of him lies down below. Here is the full version of the testing if value. As I said, I pass the values 1 and 4 to this function. And this is how you create a function. You start it off with the keyword function, the name of the function, the name you want to give it. You can give it anything. And then I'm going to accept two variables. What am I doing here? Creating a variable in JavaScript. Start off with the keyword var, followed by whatever name you want to give it. Equal sign, it's going to take the value passed here and assign it to this variable. Same thing's being done here. Here I'm creating a new variable called value to return, and it is actually a string, and I'm assigning it between these two quotes a blank space as a value. And remember, you have to end all of your actions within JavaScript with a semicolon. And here I'm creating a variable and not assigning it a value. Then we come down here to an if then else statement. If you don't know what that is, what it does is it checks for a true value, meaning in this case that value past one would be greater than value past two and value past one is not equal, exclamation point equal sign, to value past two. If that is true, what would happen is all of these actions here would be performed, meaning value to return would be assigned to the beginning of its string of text, the whatever value is held in value past one. Then what you would do to add this string right here to this value is put an addition sign. Then we have the double quotes here and here. And then I attach to the end of that string value past two, whatever the value of that is. And then I assign this whole entire line of text to the string value to return. If this was not true, what would happen is you would skip all this code here, all the way down to this curly bracket, and
and jump to the else statement. Then we would perform another if then else statement. And if that wasn't true, we jumped out of this else statement and performed this uh, statement right here by default. Then what are we gonna do? We're gonna send this value, this identification number, and whatever the value of value to return is to the function named edit node text. But before we do that, I need to explain to you what the document object model is. To understand this code, you have to understand what the document object model is, or DOM. The DOM allows you to access all of the objects that lie in your HTML code. Every web page is considered to be a document object. So, if the browser considers the whole web page to be a document object, how can we work with and edit the HTML by manipulating the document object? Well, HTML documents contain text, images, links, CSS style tags, form elements, etc. These tags are referred to as nodes in the DOM. JavaScript can be used to manipulate these HTML elements by referring to them by their defined HTML ID name. So knowing that now, we can see here that I'm passing the ID name to this function for processing. Let's take a look at that span code again. You can see here's the span code and here's the ID name that I passed whenever we performed a click on this span. And this is the function that that information was sent to. So here's the identification number, which is gonna be if span EX, and here is the new text that I am going to be working with. Well, remember everything in HTML and the document is referred to as a node. Well, here I actually called the variable node, but this variable name could be anything you want. But how you access that node and perform actions on it is you refer to the document, the whole HTML page, followed by a dot operator, then the function get element by ID, and then input the identification number for whatever node, or span in this case, that you want to edit. Then, what am I doing on these two lines of text? This is a while loop, which I'm going to explain a little bit later. Basically, all you need to know about a while loop is it performs an action over and over and over again until whatever is in here returns a value of false. But what we're doing here is we're referring to the node followed by the dot operator and then this value first child. This is also another node, but just to make it simple, just think of a node as a box and the first child is the first box inside of that node. What I'm doing here is I'm checking to see if there's any other boxes of data inside of the area where I'm gonna paste my new text that was sent over here. And what this while statement's gonna do is it's gonna say, is there any boxes inside of this node right here? Meaning is all of this text broken up into individual nodes or is it just one big giant node? It's gonna come here and it's gonna go through and look for nodes. Of this big node. Each time it finds text inside of this, it's going to use the remove child function to delete any children or boxes that would lie in this area. After it's performed these actions, it will then come down here and use the function append child, and it's going to take the new text that was passed over to it, and using the create text node is going to create a new node inside of this span, so that whenever somebody clicks on this guy, it goes through and processes all the information and rewrites to the screen without calling a new page. It just does all of this on the fly. So how do we go from clicking on here to having all this stuff change? Well, basically what happens here is I have this set up with an, what is called an event handler. What an event handler does is it says, when somebody does something on my web page, I want to be notified so that I can run some functions. Well, the event handler used here is the onClick event handler. And you can see that by looking right here. OnClick is equal to, followed by a double quote. There's a double quote. And what it's going to do here is whenever I click on this span or a visitor to your website does, it's going to call this function, testing if value, and it's going to pass the variables one and four. And this here is just the text that lies between the span tag, which you see right there. So you might be asking yourself, are there other ways that I can compare data? Most definitely, got them right here. Here are all of the comparison operators that are available to you in JavaScript. And that is basically everything I'm gonna cover here today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. 